Hello everyone, I am Sanjay Mishra, Education Specialist e-learning at the Commonwealth of Learning. Here at the Commonwealth of Learning, we have seen that technology enabled blended learning is quickly growing in importance as an effective way to create modern and dynamic classrooms, schools and institutions. Many of our partners are using blended learning to improve student success. To support you in planning, developing and implementing your own blended learning, we have teamed up with Athabasca University in Alberta, Canada to prepare this guidebook on blended learning. I am happy to introduce you to the author of this guidebook, Dr. Martha Clevenant Innes, a professor of distance education at Athabasca University. Thank you, Sanjaya, and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Blended Learning Guidebook. In this open textbook, we present you new ways of thinking about teaching and learning to help you better prepare your students to learn and develop into 21st century global citizens through blended learning. What is blended learning? Blended learning can be defined as the combination of face-to-face -face classroom instruction with online learning within a course or program. This definition is broad enough to include a number of possible variations or designs appropriate to the individual needs and context of a school or course. In fact, according to the U.S. Department of Education, the blend of classroom and web-based teaching and learning offers access to the widest range of learning modes and methods for developing student skill and expertise as learners. Drawing from best practices in both online and face-to-face -face methods, blended learning is on the rise at colleges and universities. It can create opportunities for collaboration at a distance, increased flexibility and interaction, and enhanced learning, as well as potentially increasing learner creativity and independence. These affordances offered by blended learning are now well understood, and both educators and students find its ease of access and the integration of sophisticated multimedia and technologies highly appealing. In this first chapter, we will look at the defining characteristics of blended learning, as well as its history and growth over time. Innovative educators have been combining in-person teaching with technology-enabled learning for a long time, and with today's tech-savvy generation and computers, tablets, smartphones now available to the majority of the world's population, it's easy to imagine that simply bringing these technologies into your classroom will immediately create new high-quality educational opportunities for your students. However, as you go through the chapters and consider some of the examples of blended courses and programs, you'll see that blended learning is not merely the addition of some technological element to an existing course, but is an integrated plan utilizing the best of what both face-to-face -face and online learning has to offer. In a quality blended learning experience, the content and activities of both in-person and online learning are designed together to synthesize with or complement each other. This idea of fully integrating the two modes of learning into a coherent learning plan is one we'll emphasize throughout the guidebook. We will begin to explore the idea in this chapter by looking at three models of blended learning. The first model, blended presentation and interaction, keeps the emphasis on in-person classroom-based learning with the support of out-of-class online exercises. The flipped classroom is a common example of this. The second model, 
The blended block or program flow model involves creating a sequence of activities that incorporate both face-to-face -face and online study. Finally, the third model is fully online but includes both synchronous or real-time learning activities such as tutorials and asynchronous activities such as discussion boards. For the most part in this book, we will focus on the second model as the most balanced and integrated form of blended learning, incorporating the best from both in-person and online activities. But as you go through these models, think of how each model might be applied in your own learning situation. There is no perfect mix, and you should find the blend that works for you and your learners. Of course, there are a number of challenges that will come with blended learning, and we will look at some of these in this chapter as well. For example, it's important to consider technology access and the technical resources available to your students, such as bandwidth, connectivity, or devices. These may all affect the learning activities you end up including in your design. Safety and security, as well as skills development and support, will also be important. Above all, we must always consider pedagogical principles and how our new blended learning design will support learner motivation and meaningful learning. In later chapters, we will expand on these ideas in much more detail and present tips and recommendations to guide you toward more effective blended learning. We've also looked at some useful underlying theories, factors for creating blended learning with real impact, guidelines for implementation and technology selection, a range of activities, and finally, evaluation of blended learning programs and courses. The guidebook has been designed for teacher trainers in secondary schools, vocational education, tertiary education, as well as corporate training. We hope you find this guidebook useful. Blended learning is one of the fastest growing and most exciting areas in education today. And it has the power to transform your teaching and learning by incorporating the best of both worlds in face-to-face -face and online learning in whatever contexts you teach. Thank you.